Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can purchase it at thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. As I continue in my quest to document every modern Grand Seiko, Today, our journey brings us to the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Chronograph GMT, the SBGC003 in stainless steel. Featuring the pre-2017 dial with Seiko rather than Grand Seiko blazing at 12 o'clock, in every other respect, this is a full contemporary account of everything Grand Seiko does well. It's a big watch at 43.5 millimeters from 9 to 3, not inclusive of the crown or the shouldered chronograph pushers. It's a thick watch, but not excessively so at 16.1 millimeters. The slope and double step of the case flank helps to mitigate against encumbrance of your cuffs or sleeves, and you'll have absolutely no difficulty with a jacket cuff. From lug to lug, it's a reasonable 50.8 millimeters with a nice beautifully cambered arc to it, so it does work with your wrist to arc down and around. So if you're borderline for this watch, and I would say borderline is probably about 14 centimeters circumference, it's the shape of the lugs just as much as their span that's going to help this one wear well on your wrist. Small wrists, such as perhaps 14 to 13 and a half, may wish to wear the watch on a strap rather than on the bracelet, as the solid end links do somewhat extend the watch to 52.6 millimeters across the wrist. And if you put it on a strap, adventurers out there and experimenters. 21 millimeters is the lug spacing, so you'll have a bevy of OEM and aftermarket options. This three-link bracelet design will be familiar to aficionados of Grand Seiko. In some ways, it owes a little bit of a nod to the seminal Rolex Oyster, which is the progenitor of pretty much every bracelet of this general layout, but the details of the Grand Seiko have surpassed those of modern Rolex. Whereas modern Rolex is fairly industrial and generic, this one has nuance and evidence that a human being actually worked to finish it, and that's most notable in the transitional bevel of the flanks. Perfectly aligned from link to link, it transitions to a polished flank from a satin top. You also note the intermediates are partially polished to break up the mass of metal amidst the satin. The clasp is nicely made. As you can see, it features a couple of micrometric adjustment ports that you can manipulate using a strap tool, and you will note that all of the removable links are sized with screws in this steel bracelet. On the underside of the bracelet, big gaps to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping wrist heat on a hot day so it vents well. And you'll note the closure system is dependent on twin trigger release, so this one can't pop open. It's not a simple friction fit system, nor is it a cheap stamped clamshell. The triggers are the premium option, the right way to do things in a premium watch, and Grand Seiko does not disappoint. The case band is beautiful. I should probably grab a little bit of a polishing cloth because I'm not doing it justice, but you've heard of the famed Zaratsu finish, optically smooth and mirrored, almost like Swiss black polish? Well, it's for real. It's a tin plate polishing technique, and I've seen it performed, whereby the artisan holds the side of the case or the bracelet component physically against a spinning tin plate. A combination of eye, feel, and experience dictate the result. And considering this is done by hand, pressure, and eye, it's amazing how symmetrical from side to side the result is, as well as the consistency of the outcome. That's the value of having not just a human being finish your watch, but an expert human being. There's a nice contrast between the sheer of the side, which is nevertheless not as flat and squared off as a Rolex case. It does have a little bit of a sexy curve to it, and you can see the flame surfacing effect attesting to the compound curvature. There's a handsome bevel down the flanks that's symmetrical from side to side, and then the hoods of the lugs are satin finished to blend nicely with the satin finished flanks of the conforming end link of the bracelet. The bezel is stepped up from the case to add another layer of complexity, and it is a minimalist bezel, conical and rather narrow. Moving on to the dial, you can see that Grand Seiko decided it was all in for complication. Date, chronograph, power reserve, second time zone in 24-hour format, and yet very logical in its layout. Note, outboard, there's a stepped minutes and seconds track for easy reading when using the chronograph seconds function against that hash scale that is a sloped rehot that doubles at its base as a 24-hour indicator. You can see the 23, 24, 1, 3, all of that read against the red index of the 24-hour hand, which can be set separately from the local hour hand at center. So you have two time zones, one of which is in a 24-hour format. That's your reference time. It's the time where you're, you are not, generally your home time. So you know whether it's day or night and what time it is. Now you have a very logically arrayed stack of chronograph registers at three o'clock. 
chronograph minutes, chronograph hours. What at first appears to be a rather chaotic dial turns out to be a very logical one. And there's an indicateur reserve de marche at 7 o'clock on the dial, tracing the three-day power reserve of the spring drive caliber 9R86. There is a crosshair style and rather minimally calibrated constant seconds subdial at 9 o'clock, and you can see that is constant seconds as opposed to chronograph seconds. Of course, the chronograph featuring crisp actuation via traditional chronograph architecture. Look at the case back and you will see that there is a column wheel function selector for the chronograph operation. It is a purely mechanical chronograph, and not only does it feature the crisp actuation of one of the tastiest column wheels I've experienced, which feels and sounds great, but it also uses a vertical clutch system, and Seiko and Grand Seiko have been using vertical clutches and chronographs since 1969. The vertical clutch means that you can keep the chronograph engaged with no additional wear and tear on the chronograph mechanism. Moreover, the vertical clutch ensures that when you actuate the chronograph, it merely commences movement. It doesn't jump. A lateral clutch chronograph will jump. A vertical clutch chronograph has no play, and thus it will not. Now, the other advantage of the spring drive system, besides the power reserve of three days, is the fact that it is as precise as quartz. You're getting a watchmaker assembled, and I'm going to try to get a little bit closer, bring that gorgeous spring drive caliber into full focus for our viewing pleasure, because if you're new to spring drive, this does take some explaining. Spring drive is entirely driven by spring energy. There is no motor in this movement. There are no capacitors, there are no batteries. What you see on the dial, the motion of the hands, is driven by the spring, mechanically. All the motion you see on the case back, including the unidirectional governing wheel, is driven by the spring. Now the governing wheel, as it spins, creates an induced electrical current, and a quartz oscillator wakes up by virtue of that induced electrical current. The oscillator then works through a feedback cycle to create electromagnetic forces that allow the wheel to speed up if it's running slow or slow down if it's running fast. The result is this perfectly smooth sweep of the second sand, so there are no steps because that wheel, remember, spins only in one direction. It's not like a Swiss escapement that jumps back and forth, so you have a unique, perfectly smooth sweeping seconds hand. And, because of the quartz oscillator's influence on the timing, you have a mechanically driven, watchmaker-assembled movement that can achieve plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Remember, that's a quartz watch accuracy, and a Swiss mechanical chronometer, also driven by a spring, can only achieve, per the COSC, minus four plus six seconds per day, and still get a chronometer certificate. That's per day. This is 15 seconds per month. This is a superlative innovation. They worked for the better part of three decades on this technology before it became an automatic system in 2005. The first production versions as a manual came out in 1999. One of the most significant mechanical watchmaking technologies of the last 50 years, Seiko and Grand Seiko Spring Drive. Now, the 50 Joule movement also has a few other tricks up its sleeve. You have hacking or stop seconds, so you can set this watch precisely. You have these oversized, shouldered, braces for the chronograph pushers, that outstandingly crisp actuation, 100 meter water resistance by virtue of those screw-down guards and the screw-down crown, and of course you have a beautiful movement that is quite handsome and distinctive in its aesthetic. Most automatic chronographs are not interesting to look at. This one is. Precise, soulful, and absolutely unique. You can see in Canone this SBGC-003 on the watch box.